David and I would like to demonstrate a structured conversation in the business context. So what we'll do is we'll walk through the dialogue and as that unfolds, we'd like you to watch for the five steps of a structured conversation. Now David will be the CIO of a large grocery business and I'll be the salesperson as we move forward. Hey Scott, thanks for coming in today. The CEO is pretty adamant that we have to take cost out of our organization. So we've been having some heated debate in my team about how we can do that. And I think the cloud would be a way that we could take some cost out of our organization. And I know you guys have expertise in that area. So I'm interested in your thoughts on how a large supply chain organization like ours can really take advantage of the cloud without hurting the business in any way. But we've got to take cost out. Okay. Well, it sounds like a good challenge, and uh, I'm glad that you invite us in today. I'd like to explore it with you in greater depth. Before I can get into an in-depth view of what we've done or what we might be able to do, it would be helpful for me to get a little deeper cut okay. at what's going on in the business. Sounds like you've had some, as you said, some pretty robust conversations. So yeah. let's get into those for a minute. So in addition to driving costs out, which the cloud is meant to do, what other business issues are you facing? Well, I think the cloud will also help us reduce our capital requirements, mm -hmm. which would be good for us. And I'm really looking to see if it can help me enable collaboration throughout the whole organization. And I'm talking from the store directors to the distribution centers to the buyers at corporate. Okay. So from store distribution, buyers, right. increasing collaboration. What other business issues? Um, I want to cut the number of vendors that okay. we use. I think it might help us do that. And then I really need to increase agility and flexibility throughout the whole supply chain. Well, those are good, good topics for the cloud, agility and flexibility. So as you look at these overarching business issues, which one is most important? I would say enable collaboration. That's which, going to be pretty critical to our organization. Okay. Can you uh, dive a little deeper and give me some examples of how the lack of collaborations become such an issue for you? Yeah, sure. yeah. So for our organization, I think one of the things that we do very well is we have a hyper-local strategy. So what that means is the individual store directors have a lot of flexibility in terms of the promotions they can run in-store. So for example, if a promotion doesn't go very well, it would be nice to have that store director communicate with other store directors so they don't make the same mistakes. Absolutely. And I would assume that the opposite is also true. If things are going really well, you'd want those store directors right. sharing that as well, right? Right. So, for example, in one market in San Francisco, we had a store director discover that when they put an end cap on the ice cream aisle with chocolate syrup, they moved 33% more chocolate syrup. So, and then they tried store branded chocolate syrup instead of the nationally recognized brand, and margins are even better on that. So, so you store. multiply that across all the products that we have or the different in-store trials we do, you can see how that could affect our top line revenue. I like it, great example. Uh, other, other examples of collaboration issues or challenges? Um, there is a significant challenge that we also have to address, which is at the distribution centers. Okay. So we have corporate buyers who order product from vendors. Those trucks come into the distribution centers for dis, uh, disbursement out to the stores. And we have an inbound quality control team. So uh, they check to make sure that the shipment is accurate in terms of what the buyer ordered. Where we get into trouble is in the produce area. Uh, we're expecting, for example, strawberries of a certain size. And so if the inbound quality control person sees that those aren't the size of strawberries that we ordered, he has to reject the shipment. Hmm. Well, before that happens, we want them communicating with the buyers because the buyers know and understand from a marketing perspective what advertisements we've put out, what customers are becoming, will be coming into the store looking for. And so if we have the wrong product, we have to make a decision. Are we going to accept that or are we going to reject it? So I need better, easier collaboration between the distribution quality control and the buyers. This could also mean bringing the vendors in. And, and you can imagine this happens with multiple vendors a number of times throughout the day as the shipments come in. So I've got to facilitate better collaboration in that. So that, that's a great example. What I like about that is it has uh, a lot more rigor to it. You know, if we're looking at the vendors 
communicating with the buyers, the buyers with inbound quality control, then out to the stores. That's great, great. Um, other other issues? Uh, there's one that um, it's probably not nearly as significant as the other two, but it is still something that gets my attention. If you just walked around our organization and you just watched what was going on, if no one knew you were looking, you'd see undocumented workarounds for areas where we don't have policy or process. Sure. But what happens is store directors and inbound quality control people and buyers, they know who to call. And my belief is if we increase the ability for them to collaborate, they won't be as reluctant to pick up the phone and call somebody, and that that could help us save quite a bit of money. And so you're hoping that the collaboration going up will actually solve the workarounds? I think. Is At least part of it. Right. And it sounded like there's policy and other things that you're trying to drive there, right? Some standardization. We'll work on that stuff. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. Well, this, this sounds interesting. So as we, I think I'm getting it. Let's see, let's see if I have a, a capture of it. So as you think about the stores, the trials, the distribution centers, the, the uh, detailed collaboration there, and even the workarounds, what do some of these things lead to in the business? Well, let me just take one, like the distribution uh, inbound quality control issue. If the, tr if the product gets delayed on the truck, that means we have late shipments to the stores. Mm -hmm. Late shipments to the stores equals overtime. More importantly, there's a ripple effect when customers come in looking for that product and it's not there. Because then we have to scramble, find another vendor, get in the right product so that our customers are happy, and we oftentimes pay more in that case. The more important issue, though, is spoiled bad product. If product sits on a truck for very long, it can go bad in a matter of hours. So we have to facilitate that process. So uh, as you think about the spoilage and so forth, how, how are you measuring uh, these challenges around these delays and the ripple effect? Hmm. Good question. Um, every distribution center is required to send a spoilage report on a monthly basis to corporate. And then, of course, we share that with the buyers. And what we do with that report is we watch to see is there any vendor that has a bigger problem with you know, actually sending what we ordered. And so we address those issues. And uh, so we, we monitor that on a monthly basis per distribution center. Okay. And uh, so what, what is the, what's the standardized cost that you're looking at as you think about these spoilage reports? What are you seeing in these distribution centers? Um, I think the latest figures were somewhere around eighty to eighty-five thousand per month per distribution center. Okay, all right, per center. And you have how many centers? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. So you're looking at about looks like about oh million dollars per center per right. year. Yeah. You got twenty-two. What What would you like it to be? What kind of cuts would you like? What kind of savings are you hoping the cloud and other ways of collaboration will help? Well, it probably wouldn't make sense if we couldn't reduce that number by 50%. I know that's aggressive. It is. Uh, but we have to make a pretty significant movement in that area. I mean, the CEO is looking at everything. So I'd want to get at least as close to 50 as we can, and even more if that's okay. possible. All right. Well, let's, you know, as we get deeper and as we start to look at where the cloud can have its impact, uh, we'd like to find as many cuts as we possibly can, whether it's always going to be at 50 or what will happen, I think will be something we have to take in the journey. So you're looking at, it, it, just in the distribution side of things, not including trials or anything else, you're looking at about $22 million a year, 50% of that, so some, you know, 10 to $11 million right. just in... Uh, the spoilage report, distribution, and so forth. Pretty right. significant. Yeah. Pretty well, significant. especially in the grocery business where our average margin is 1.5%. No doubt about it. And that money will fall straight to the bottom line. Well, this is a, it's a good case, David. I'm, I'm glad we have a chance to kind of get a little deeper. Let me just summarize and make sure I've got a pretty good handle, at least in the way of collaboration. Okay. So we'd like to see an increase in our ability at the store level with trials, the sharing of information, what's working, what's not. Um, you're looking at the distribution centers as you think about the vendors, the buyers at a corporate level, the uh, in-house controls that you have there at each distribution centers. 
uh, I thought that was interesting as we drove down through there. Even at that space, we could be saving upwards of around 10 to $11 million, and not even including the undocumented walk workarounds and other places that we might be able to give you some help. Am, am I capturing a pretty good picture of the overall context of this? Yeah, I, I think that's a very accurate capture. And of course, there are other areas that we'd like to look at. Those are just a couple of examples. And I would, I would expect you know, to see some recommendations from you in terms of other areas where you've helped other supply chain companies. I mean, they've got to have experience outside of what ours is. Sure. Be happy to share some. Because um, I think there's some great best practices out there. So I got that right. Yeah. A am I leaving anything out? Is there any other no. major area that we should at least explore? I think for right now, that's enough discussion. I'm anxious to hear from you how the cloud can help. Yeah, I am what too. have you seen? Uh, well, um, I think that there's three or four ways that we could approach this, uh, given your context, given other uh, retail channels, grocery business, and so forth that we've helped. Of course, yours is unique. So let's dive in. Okay. So there's probably three different ways uh, that you might consider moving forward.